Yep. Oh, yeah, here, on here, on this. Mark, you're doing Instagram, right? Yep. I'm going to come off Wi Fi, I think. Ah, oh, we're on! Ha <laughs> ha! Guys, how are you doing? We're just going to load on uh, some Instagram stuff and then we'll get started. Hello you guys, hi Darren, hi Julie. Lovely to see you. Thank you for coming. I'll just wait for people to get on and this to load. So I'm going to go through today any little tips and tricks. So we've cleaned <laughs> thousands and thousands of figaros and there's some good tips that we've learned. Hey, hello from Orkney, yes. Hello, hello from Exotic Bibcock. You make it sound really <laughs> nicer than here. But yeah, we over the years, we've literally cleaned thousands and thousands of figaros. We do it all day, every day. And what I want to show you is just some tips that are going to help you, some things that we've learned over the years that have made a, a substantial difference to either how cool they look when we see them at a show or or whatever, just how nice they look in the yard. We've got some pals here today, actually. Feel free to put anything in the comments. Darren, hello from Bath. Hello, mate. Nice to see you. Right. So, guys, we will... Uh, hello, Laura. Hello, Alicia. Hello, Anthony. Nice to see you guys. Right, we'll get going in a minute. But, yeah, while we're just waiting... This one here, we're going to try and do something with. So we'll probably send you guys out a newsletter or something around it, but we want to see if we can do something really cool with it and make it a little bit trick. So what we might do is ask your ask your opinion on it and uh, and see what you think. But yeah, maybe do something to make it look a bit trendy. Right, guys, I can see there's a few of us on, and we'll get started. So yeah, I'm going to basically just on a like broad overview go around cleaning go through cleaning. I'm going to do some real basic stuff and then I'm going to go into some bits that will save you some time, make your car look better, make it set for summer and if you want to sell it probably help you get a little bit more uh, money for it. So I'm just going to start with the complete basics of washing the car off. So if we were starting with this with this car now to clean it off, which is a lovely little pink number, we just literally start off I'd probably use a jet wash but I thought I'd use the hose because you might not have a hose at home just come in a bit closer and have a look so all I'm doing at this point is just getting off some of the sort of heavier bits like these bits here come on show the guys on there so yeah any of these little bits on the top I'd just be giving it a rinse off and getting that and the main sort of dusty bits off the car I'm gonna grab my phone if you've got comments or questions on the way through just ask, ask any questions that you uh, you might have. Good afternoon, Alexi. Lovely to see you here as well. Right. Um, so, I'll use some of the products I'm going to show you guys are ones that uh, we use here. But I've tried to find some that are just ones that we've got really cheaply from supermarkets and things like that just so that I can help you because you can spend a lot on these cleaning products and you definitely don't always need to some of them like this one are a trade one but there's no so you would probably have to buy it in bulk but mostly you know for cleaning a Figaro just a decent sort of car wash a turtle wax or, wax or something like that so I've got two buckets here come in have a look come in and show the guys these so Ideally, I'd be filling this as I go, and it would froth the, froth the water up. But they've both got these little grip uh, protectors in the bottom of them. So these fit in the bottom of the buckets and just basically stop too much of the grip um, falling through into the bottom. We've got a clean bucket here, which is just going to be clean water. And then we've got a bucket here, which, is, which has got the, got the cleaner in it. So, I'm doing this a little bit in a rush, so it's not mixing incredibly quickly. But we'd start off with just a soapy wash. Ideally, I'd be going over the car one panel at a time. So just going over the panel, 
getting any of the dirt off it. And then importantly, when we come back to clean it, I'm going back, rinsing everything off here in this bucket, and then coming out with a clean cloth, and then back into the foaming bucket. Now, the important thing is that we're not ending up carrying the grit back onto the car, because otherwise that's when we'll end up just moving dirt and moving grit around and uh, and pretty much making the uh, making the car worse. Feel free to keep adding any comments that you've got, guys, as well. So yeah, one panel at a time. Come and have a look. I'd basically just be rinsing that off afterwards and getting the car basically to a to a clean to a clean state. So I'd go around the car one panel at a time. Then. The first area that I would attack would be the wheels. So we do bodywork and then wheels and then we'll move on to the hood. So here I'll be using just like a basic cleaning brush which you could get from a supermarket or get car specific. And this is like an anti-corrosive uh, wheel cleaner. So I'd use a bit of this. Definitely get it on the tires as well and then in all the little nooks and crannies around the wheels. Oh guys, can you hear me on Instagram? Is the sound working okay? Let me just have a look at the comments. It's all a bit, little bit glitchy. Sorry about this. Good morning from Orlando. Hello, lovely to see you. Oh, Clearwater Beach, Florida. Florida, Ireland. Check you guys out. Mm, it's probably a little bit sunnier than it is here. The sun did actually come out a tiny bit for this. So I was pleased about that because it was raining this morning. Have you got sound on there now? Okay, cool. Well, we'll keep going anyway. So body work first, one panel at a time, and I'll move on to the detail bits in a minute. Then we get onto the wheels. With a Figaro, there's not massive areas on the wheels that, that we need to get into, but one of these brushes is quite good just for getting in this bit here and if you look come and look closely at this hubcap so you want to try and clean this rim in here but as you can see with this hubcap which is really common the paint actually starts to come off on this edge so you don't want to use any cleaners that are too aggressive you don't want to scrub it too hard and obviously the part of the reason we're doing this after the body is because it's going to be a lot dirtier and a lot uh, a lot a lot grittier as well but yeah, I definitely do wheels first. And then one of the things that makes a massive difference, typically we do this at the end, but it really does make a difference when you use like a rubber and vinyl care. And if we really wanted to make the car look nice and go and spend a lot of time on it, at the end, we'd probably go around all of these pieces, everything that's this black rubber around the car. Because one of the things about the Figaro is when you get come in guys you can come in when I'm doing the detail on stuff when you've got bits like the chrome the black rubber and the paint which is repeated all over the car one of the ways to really dramatically make the car pop is to show is to um, illuminate you know highlight the difference between the three surfaces and part of that is to make the make the black rubber really shine so Sometimes on the rubber parts like that you can just let it run off or if you've got a dirty cloth or something you can just run that around it but it really is one of the ways to get all the bits to, to, to pop on the car and on the smaller bits the way I do it is just get a tiny bit on the end of the cloth like that obviously we would have cleaned the chrome first but we'll do the chrome in a minute and just neatly wipe it just around the rubber sometimes you have to give the chrome or the paint a bit of a clean off but it just brings out the black in the rubber it does make it it does actually uh, extend the life of the rubber as well but what you find typically on the bigger is because the rubber is not a really high quality and it's old and it's all the oils in it have dried out that it doesn't really this is more about the way that it looks than than actually about the uh, than actually about making it last longer. Right, just looking through at your question. Washington State Chappie, and it's early. I can't think what time it is, but I know it's pretty early there. 
<laughs> right, then the next bit we get onto with the hood. And the hood is key because sometimes you need a new hood, but sometimes you definitely don't need a new hood. And we see people sometimes have to change when they genuinely don't need one. So, the key to doing the hood is to clean both bits of it, the inside and the outside of it. So the first thing I'm going to do, especially as it's depending on which part of the world you're in, this might be the first bit of spring, is we're maybe opening the hood for the first time. And one of the things that always goes wrong, or always, very often goes wrong, is there's a little lock. If you've ever tried to open the hood, and the right hand side opens and the left hand side doesn't open there's a little latching feature that doesn't work if you guys come in close it's this little if you guys stand on that side and look across and we can just pull out a little mechanism in the back so this is like a safety mechanism this piece here if i just move this you can see the mechanism should move in and out and this cable i'll show you the lock in a minute moves in there so it's always worth just giving this a bit of a grease and if you find that your hood is locked and it literally won't open just have a look at this little arm here because what happens sometimes is it just slips and you can normally fiddle with it or prise it a little bit with a screwdriver and uh, that will get it open the first time i'll just show you the other the other end of that mechanism So you see the little locking piece here. And you may have had problems. You can see as I, in fact, you can see even the first time I moved that, it didn't move properly. And then it starts to be a little, start to free up a little. So once we've got the hood open, it is a case of cleaning it. And as I said, we want to clean the outside, the inside, all of it. We'll start with the outside of it. But one of my great tips given to me by my colleague, Anthony, was this stuff and you guys outside the UK probably don't have B&M bargains so we use a general purpose cleaner here that we buy in bulk but you can buy this one for a quid in uh, B&M bargains it's called elbow grease and it does the same job it's a general purpose cleaner but hoods can be a real pain to clean so ideally this would have been uh, washed off to some extent but it's important the way you clean them. So basically it has to be cleaned with a brush like this. You can use one like this, or you can use a bigger one or whatever you want, but you'd go over the whole hood, but really trying to work with it. So you can see here, we've got like a particular area of dirt. And because these hoods uh, have got this grain texture to them, you just can't clean them any other way. And sometimes it can actually take quite a while to, to, to clean them. And you can see even with this little bit here, which is probably just a bit, little bit of sap or something like that. It still takes a while. And that's, it's barely coming off now, but it's just starting to get a bit lighter. Once you've cleaned the area that you need to, it's about wiping it off but one tip that i can give you here which is absolutely key is that do not ask me why i know use a colored cloth so if you use like these microfiber yellow ones are okay which you'll buy in any any motor center but if you use um you get for example those big rolls of blue stuff for cleaning cars which is like tissue paper a lot of the time they will stain and then they will actually make make it worse and you'll be scrubbing away scrubbing away and then you'll look back and it's blue and then you probably are going to struggle to uh to get it off ah oh, liam the pink stuff also works and is also a pound from b m cool yeah there's definitely guys if you're like into detailing as a profession then you do need the really good products but for a lot of things especially something like hood cleaning which is unique most of the hoods on figaro's have been changed and this is like a, a marine grade vinyl if it's something like this that you're that you're doing then it doesn't really need to be anything really specific so i'd start there i'd work my way around the whole hood over all these bits you probably spend more time on the hood than you would on the rest of the car depending where you've parked it but as a really 
another tip for hoods don't park under trees i mean even here we've got a couple of electricity cables and sometimes a bird will poop on the car or something and it is hard work the hoods are they stain quite easily because they're light material right the other trick with the hood and i'm going to move on to a couple of other bits that are that are like this is cleaning all the small areas as a sort of cleaning cleaning philosophy I would say that the the trick to getting a car to really pop, to pop and to look better than all the other cars that you'll park next to is in the detail and we'll move on to that with the bodywork in a minute but the hood is a great example if you guys just look down in the little crevices where the hood folds in if it's the same as this side you can see all the dirt that actually picks up in those in those areas Pat says hi, missed you in the Cotswolds. I know Pat, I was on a training course and uh, I was really sad that I missed it. I saw the photos and I was disappointed, but we'll catch up soon. Um, yeah, sorry, so back to that. So I'm, I'd use the same product and with the hood, the trick is to get it to a sort of, and depending on the type of hood, you can often pull these off. And then you can see there it's filthy and although it might look how just with a quick wipe because this bit cleans more easily than the hood because it's got no grain to it with just a really quick wipe it drastically improves it and believe me like, as somebody that's been in this trade for ages those little details are the bit that makes a difference if you want it to pop at a show if you want it to uh, you know you want to put it in the paper and sell it if you're going to take it to a trader and sell it whatever you're going to do it's those bits actually make more different make make a bigger difference than the big bits on the outside so yeah I would go through the go through the rest of the hood and I was sorry see if there's any more questions do those bits uh, okay after cleaning the hood should we protect it from the Sun says Stanislas Stanislas, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. I think I have, buddy. Um, the no, because this is well, I say no. So with the original hoods, come and have a look. We've got an original one. So with the original hood, which are very, 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 very rare. Literally, I, I would say probably one in a hundred figaros now have the original hoods. It's the same as the rubber that I talked about, in that the vinyl starts to go dry and it starts to crack but there's not really much you can do because there's not much you can put on it that will that will protect it any of the hoods that are aftermarket some of these might have been fitted by us or may have been fitted by someone else it's the same that one hasn't got one it's the same on these pals the material is generally generally um, as long as you get a good quality hood uh, marine grade vinyl in which case it will last quite a long time one of the things that actually does cause them to rot is if you've either left the hood open or you've got a leak and then the backing material in the hood because you can see on the back of your hood here this black area is cloth see the bit where my finger is and although that's water resistant it's not as uh, durable as the outside so yeah I wouldn't worry too much Scott, you can buy a new unclipped installation on Amazon to cut to fit, looks great. Yeah, that's fine, yeah, you can cut these to fit, you can make them, these aren't available new, um, and they do sometimes split, like if you look at this one here, it's split around there. We, we Actually, one thing we do is a little protector plate just to cover that if you've got these tiny little splits, because you can see, when I went, when I was talking about the detail earlier, and getting back to how you make your car look the best that you can, that's a great example, the little bit of dirt around there, because if you look around a car, it's not really what you're looking at, but your eye will be drawn to it. It will be drawn to those bits. So ideally you'd clean this up, get rid of these brown stains from around it, and then maybe put one of the little plaques on it just to tidy it up. And it is those bits that, that make the difference on the car. Hello, hello, thank you for watching and welcome. Uh, feel free to ask any more questions anybody so while we're on the subject of getting those little details cleaned up and how to really get the car to look to be the best 
the best version of itself. Um, I want to talk about the door closing, the door shuts, because this is also, this is really an area that is more important than the other part. When you open the door on the car, the door shut is, is more, yeah, is more important than anything else. So come in a bit closer and I'll show you what I mean. Let's take this area around here. So this one's actually not too bad, but generally what you'll have is, is dirt around these areas here, around these insides of the doors, and you lose that crisp, sharp look. Um, and the way to get rid of that is the same as the outside body of the car, really, to give it a, give it a really good wash off. But then in these shots, I'll use a rubbing compound. So this is a bit, this is a 3M one called Fast Cut Plus, but it's basically a bit like um, teacup. And then once I'd cleaned it, so if it was this one, I wouldn't bother hosing it off or using a wet cloth in there. Obviously, don't let water go too inside here or in here. But I'd literally put a tiny bit of rubbing compound on the cloth and then just carefully work my way around it in detail. And the only thing you need to be careful of in these areas, so this car's pink, so it's been repainted, but if it hasn't and your car's original, this paint in here won't have the same protection as this paint out here, and you can rub right through it if you're using a teacup. But yeah, just cleaning up those little areas that are in here, it really does uh, start to make a difference. And then obviously we would treat that rubber in the same way we, I showed you to treat the bits of rubber at the front. And that's what makes it lift. That's what makes the difference between a car that's good and great. It doesn't matter what the condition's like, it's still, it's still really got a pop. And actually, while we're talking, if this one's open, I think it is. So this car with the original hood is a really original one. And yeah, this is a good example of it. Have a look at the shot on this one, guys. So this is an original door shut. And you can see here, you get this sort of brown, brown staining. I'll just grab the clock. have a bit more impact on here but you can just see that in the same way as with the other shot you can just start to slowly clean up all these little black stains that pick up from the road dust over the years and it will take time um, you know but that does make the difference cool smiling at me now because I'm not the greatest balloter but I just happen to be the one that does the presenting um, but yeah just following that the last bit I'll do on the outside is the chrome and then I'll move on to the inside and give you a few tips on there and I'll give you my our views on what you can do with interior panels and we can look at a few of the cars to show you you know what we might be able to do but finally on the outside I just wanted to talk about the chrome a little bit because the chrome is the is the diamond, the jewel in the crown of the Figaro. So come in a little bit closer and let's look at some of these in a bit more detail. So different types of chrome on the Figaro, just to be brief, you've got plastic chrome, you've got um, plated chrome, traditional chrome, uh, and then we've got stainless steel. Some of which, they all need to be cleaned in different ways. So to start with, come and have a look, you've got bumpers here. And these bumpers, all manufactured by Nissan, all the same. The quality of them is meh, they're okay. I wouldn't use an aggressive, like, uh, I think they call it auto, one of those aggressive chrome cleaning products. Again, I'm just using this 3M fast cut. It's just like a T-cut. It's a little bit stronger than T-cut, but in your normal store, you'll get a T-cut. 
and then I'd literally just clean it with that in the same way that I would polish a car. You can't really do much more than that. And these bumpers are quite new, so they clean up pretty easily. There's just a bit of, you know, dirt on this car. But the, you know, you can only go so. There's only so much you can do, and and they won't, they won't get any better. The more, the more you rub them, doesn't always make them better and better. You know, some of them, the chrome just rots through from the inside out, and that's all you can do. Um, then you've got other bits like the hinges on the boot again I'd clean them in the same way but unless they're new they're probably going to be faded a little bit as well but I would just again use a teacup use a polish same for the door handles now I have got a good tip for you for these bits so the bits on the car that are stainless steel so this whole strip that runs all the way down the car is stainless steel these bits that run around here stainless steel and these bits that run round the windscreen are also stainless steel and I believe, ah uh, no, Ranulph, thanks for pointing out, these two bits are also stainless steel as well, so the lower chrome and the thin piece here. And that means that they're stainless steel so they can actually be repaired. Now there's two ways to repair them, so I'm going to give you the, I'm going to tell you about the slightly more complicated way because I can't take the bits off the car now, and then I'm, um, uh, and then I'm going to um, show you the quick way on the car. Sorry, I'll just ask a couple of, answer a couple of other questions. Uh, Julia said uh, the 3M uh, bottle. Yeah, so that. 3M Perfect It Fast Cut Plus Extreme. But it's a rubbing compound, basically. If you asked in a motorist centre for a rubbing compound, that that would be there but that one is quite a good one it's a trade one but i think you can buy you can probably buy it online on you know amazon or something like that okay so come in closely guys and we'll have a little look so this isn't a really quick process but it is a fantastic uh a, a way that when we restore the cars it's something we do and this would be one of my this would be one of my top secret tips <laughs> so if you take these trims off the car which is very which is fiddly to do you can from the back from the rear of it on the on the concave side you can just use a screwdriver and a little hammer and tap the dents out of it but one other thing that you can also do is you can get very small scratches and dinks and dents out on the surface so let me see I probably haven't got time to do a whole job but let me see if there's a little imperfection in one of these and I can show you So you might not be able to see it and there's virtually hardly anything there but when you've got little scratches or like here we've got tiny little scratches around there you might barely see it in the light but this is so when you asked about the rubbing compound this is rubbing paper that goes with rubbing compound and this is 1500 grit so you could use 1500 grit or 3000 grit but if you want to ask it would be wet and dry 1500 it's called wet and dry works wet and dry I'm going to use it wet on this and this isn't a quick process and if you're going to try it try it on a small area don't get stuck in but you can just gently just start to just take the scratches off the surface really 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 gently and it will take the light scratches out because getting these trims off the car it's a pain in the bum to be honest and so any repairs you can do on the car are worth it my top tip for this would be use a little bit of tape around there if you're doing a big scratch because you don't want to you know we see sometimes somebody's tried this and they haven't protected the bodywork and then it's ended up scratching the car then we're back to the 3m plus stuff and then we just polish it with this and if I was really taking my time, I would have probably used the 1500 and then a 3000 paper. And then I would spend a little bit of time. And when I say a little bit of time, you could, you know, you, you could go around the whole car and do all of this and prob probably spend a couple of days on it. Because even with this one go over, you can see there's a little bit of improvement. But you still got slight light scratches. But the trick is to repeat the process. Although the, the material is 
with stainless steel, it will, you can take them out. But the trick is that you have to make the scratch light enough by rubbing it. And there's no, there's no um, coating on it that you can rub away. So this is how we'd prepare them. So a lot of the time we do it when it's off the car, so on the bench. But sometimes we would do it uh, on the car. So you can see that one's starting to lift, but you can see it's quite a sort of long-winded process. But it does work. And if yours are really scratched or you've got one particular scratch, that is a really useful way to, uh, to get those bits out of the car. Okay. Corey, Scott, how are you doing? Welcome to our... Welcome to our cleaning hints and tips and feel free to ask any questions. So, I said that, yeah, go on, fire away. Okay, so Flipful would like to know, is there a way to turn a yellow roof back to white? And Vicky Neve would like to know, she has a little root, a little rust bubble that yeah. has appeared over winter. Any tips to nip it in the bud? Okay, so definitely. So the first one was turn a yellow roof back to white. So I'm assuming you mean yellow stains. So I'd revert back to the comment from earlier that I'm afraid to say is just brute force and ignorance. <laughs> so if you didn't see it, this is some product that I found, but any of these general purpose cleaners will do. And if you're referring to, if you see on here, so it's a metal coating and a metal frame, and you'll always get these orangey marks and bits on it and stuff like that. But it is just literally a case of getting the cleaner and just literally working it and working it and working it until things start to go a little bit whiter and there is a point where these hoods get so stained they won't come back um, sometimes if they've been sun scorched as well I'm not sure what your location is it doesn't happen very much in the UK we don't sadly have enough sun but yeah it is a long-winded process I think in the past we've spent hours and hours cleaning these hoods to try and get them to come up sometimes they do a lot of the time they do but sometimes it stains the material but like I say most of these hoods are like a marine grade vinyl so it's you can see it whitens it to an extent and if I spent another you know 10 minutes on it it would get a bit whiter and the a bit whiter and this is you know not not old so yeah there is a point where they go that really yellowy horrible yellow that you can't do anything okay the other question was what if there's a little rust bubble appeared over winter oh I've lost the questions oh no here we go um okay so are you are they live can they say where is the bubble Vicky, Vicky, can you, um, while I'm carry on talking about the inside, if you could just write in the comments where the bubble is, and then I'll talk about where you where to address it and, and what to do if that's okay. Right, interior. Okay, so if we talk about the panels first, because I know that was an area that you guys asked me about. So I'm. A but it is possible that you can buy products that are that, um, are that claim to clean the sticky material off, remove it from the inside while everything's in the car. But in, in my experience, I have found that that's been satisfactory. And so we'll take them out and recoat them. But it's not a complete lost cause. The best cleaner that I would use, and we use this for loads of things, it won't damage it, is, is white spirit. This is just builders or whatever, home white spirits. And I would use a bit of this around the uh, around the inside of the car for dirty marks. This one's been refurbished, but let me try and show you on one of these ones. So I'm not sure if they're refurbished inside or not. So. So this one is, this car is very original actually, it's like a super original type car. But it's still got a slight tacky feel to this inside and this has probably been cleaned but if, if I was to mark it too much it would start to pick up the grease off my, from my fingers. And on something like that we would either go two routes with it, we would either give it a clean with some white spirit 
which will just get the, the main bits of the grease off or we would take it out and coat it which is I'll show you in a minute but yeah it's just literally white spirits on the rag and then anywhere that you've got finger marks like around here just gently you can't you know aggressively do it but it will take the light bits off and it is good enough the the paint which I believe is called a fluorolasty paint is absolutely shocking for picking up grease from your hands so yeah what we've done on this one and we would still use white spirits if your car's been recoated by us or anywhere else you can still use white spirit but being a white interior it's terrible for picking up greasy marks um, and so yeah anywhere on this on the white material in the inside we'd normally start with the with just some white spirit to pick up the greasy marks around here on some of them that have been recoated you can use the general purpose cleaners but you do have to be a bit careful. If yours has got the tacky feel and you use an aggressive general purpose cleaner, you're gonna end up with light marks in it. So the trick there is just to start on a small piece and, uh, and, and go from there. But that's how I'd go around those. On the, in terms of the rest of it, so this rubber here, most of them have been stripped back like this one. So if yours is a smooth rubber like this, you could clean that with a general purpose cleaner. Uh, if yours is still fuzzy and furry, uh, it's probably gonna be pretty tough to clean and there's not much you can do on that because it will, um, it will uh, the, the fuzzy material, the coating on top will come off. If yours is like that with the fuzzy, my tip would be to pull this all the way off, you just pull it and it comes all the way out and then just put it in a bucket, maybe with some hot water and just wash it and scrub it and get all in the back of here. And you might find that the coating just comes off, but I mean, this one's got the coating stripped off. So this has just been washed and scrubbed and then recoated, but it looks a lot cleaner. One of the nice things as well is that once you've got this out the way, this is the way that we do it, is you can clean all of the gully as well and so you could clean the gully yeah either like you clean the outside of the car or if it's really bad you could also use the general purpose cleaner in there as well um vicky's got back to us vicky the bubble is at the back of the white bit but on the topaz mist paintwork okay so like here somewhere i'm assuming uh at the back of the white bit on the paintwork okay so Okay, so yeah, I can give you a good, good, some good tips for this. So basically, the underneath this trim here is the join between this panel and this panel. And sometimes it goes rusty underneath the trim and then it runs round either onto this edge that's around here or onto the edge that's around here. It's quite a common place for it to rust. Sadly, typically, it normally is starting to show itself because there's a rust problem underneath there so what it's worth doing at some stage is getting someone to just take the trim off and have a look underneath but with that part of the body sadly it normally needs that it's going to uh, it's going to need a repair on the phrase but you're welcome to send us a photo if you want uh, uh, another opinion millie millie hello uh nail varnish um remover to remove stains where using spirits it works a treat uh, yeah, I, yeah, I guess you'd probably uh, just need to be a bit careful. You don't leave it on for too long because it is a little bit corrosive. But yeah, the previous owner, Stacy says, the previous owner of our car never cleaned the interior, and it was beyond sticky and black dirty. I dipped a microfiber cloth, and the mixture of simple green and white water worked wonders. Fantastic! That's a brilliant tip. Thanks for that, Stacy. Um, the only thing I'd say is that. The problem that can often happen, it depends what you're trying to achieve, you know, is, it is if you're trying to clean all the sticky off of these panels while it's in the car, it can run down the back of the seat belt, it can run, you know, all over the place. And so it's, uh, it, it's um, to do a really, really thorough job, it needs to come out. Uh, Ellen, how do you clean the back bar that goes yellow? Again, that's a bit like the rubbery stuff on the hood, other than the, um, general purpose cleaner that I talked about so again this one's been recoated 
but when they've gone yellow it's just sun staining clean it with general purpose cleaner but there's not a huge amount you can do uh, other than that so I'm going to now move on to the seats unless any of you guys have got other questions Julie says thank you very fantastic fantastic tips a new word Julie nice if um, if you guys have got other questions put them in put them uh, in while we're while we're going through so I'm going to talk about leather and I'm going to show you two different uh, types of the leather. So these seats are uh, new seats. So do you guys want to open that door and then you can look through? So these seats are new leather. Um, they look so pretty in the pink, don't they? Could you just like eat them? Um, but the, um, these are easier to treat. So if your car's got new leather in it, I would say that value it, there's, a, there's a value in treating it but if it hasn't often the leather is is very dry and is quite old and you, you're not really going to gain much like this is a product that I borrowed from one of the technicians this is not one that we've got here and it's called Gion it's quite an expensive one and it's a, it's a high high-end one have a look that's the bottle and with something with new leather I would I would recommend this definitely. If the leather's really old, you could you could spend a long time doing it. You might be okay, but generally the original seats are quite dry by now. Obviously, if you've got new ones, you want to keep feeding them. And this works in a similar way to the hood cleaner, in just that we put it on the seat. We've got a brush, and this brush needs to stay super super clean the hardest thing about ivory or almost white leather is if you stain it it's not it's not coming back so we give the seat a bit of a clean just agitate it and clean it off and then this one's like a feeder I'm not sure what they call it protects from UV and, and these will on new leather will help and so we just put a tiny bit of that on and just wipe it into the leather and that will and that will keep it soft in comparison because there's no point in you spending lots of time on these if we look at this original car again so you can see on this seat we've got these bits here on the seat this this sort of staining when these seats are a lot harder you might get some of that staining might come out but we're likely to find that it's not going to make a drastic improvement. You can see it does clean it slightly, but the problem would be that in the end I would scrub it that much that these little crack marks would actually get worse. So do give it a bit of a clean. You can, on this original leather, you can try a bit of the diluted cleaner as well, and that will slightly diluted general purpose cleaner, and that will slightly start to remove these marks. But on this seat you know I can put the feeder on and then rub it in but I'm probably not making a huge difference it does look slightly better but you, yeah you're not going to get the same desired result so I don't want your expectations to be too high but I've had some really good results just using a general purpose cleaner on those scorching marks on the seats and it will sometimes come out so I think, guys, I've covered all of the bits that I wanted to. Um, if any of you have got any questions, let me just look at these. Uh, use something called elbow grease. From, yeah, it was elbow grease from b &M. But any general, you can buy general purpose cleaners anywhere. There's nothing special. It's just that all the other ones that we've got, I sort of, we buy them in big bulk trade bottles. But yeah, that was that one. And highly recommends it. Cassie, Cathy says thank you. Make sure toothpaste is our white, no colour. Mm. Not sure about that. Oh no, here we go. For the burnt stains, I use toothpaste and warm water. And for the bar at the back of the headrest. Yeah, I can't can't say I've tried toothpaste, but it's uh, yeah, it might be great. Liam says do more live streams. Liam, what would you have us do live streams on? 
put it in the comments. There's probably a bit of a delay between me doing that. And guys, feel free, send us your feedback on what you would have us do with this pal because we just bought it, we think it's quite cool, but we think we want to make it a little bit cooler. And so, yeah, we decide uh, from there. Sue says, what was the rubber treatment called? Oh yeah, that was an auto flame product. Called Super Sheen. And so we used the Super Sheen on the tyres and on the rubbers around the car. I'd use it on the roof rubber as well and that would all get it looking really clear, crisp. <laughs> Liam says not really fast, anything. Guys, that's everything. If you've got any more questions, feel free to message them in or drop us a message in the comments and we'll check back on the messages uh, later this afternoon. But I hope you found that useful and uh, yeah, I hope you get to get your cars out and uh, enjoy them now the weather's getting good. And to all you guys that got up early and joined from overseas, I appreciate it. I ran this a little later in the afternoon because I thought I might be able to catch you. So that's it guys, thank you for the hearts, there's a heart and lots of love from me, thank you so much for, uh, for tuning in, see you guys soon.